Shalom. Israel, Shalom. <laughs> Let me stop. Shalom is bastardized for y'all who don't know. Let's say it right. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Okay. Welcome to another glorious Sabbath of the Most High. We're going to get into Friday Night Lights. <clears throat> Give me a second. If you don't mind, you hit that light. Welcome to another glorious Sabbath of the Most High. If you don't mind, could you hit that light? All right. Um, Shalom Israel. Shalom Israel. Okay. I want to see how it starts up. If it goes to blurring, I'm going to turn my camera off on this side, and you'll be able to hear me visually. I said visually. You will be able to hear me in audio. You will not see me. I said verbally. Yeah, you'll hear me verbally, or it will be just audio if this camera starts to blur up. Okay? Um, in the meantime, we'll get into some things. We're going to start up. Give me a second. We'll reach in, so let everybody know. Tune in. Let me see what we're looking like on this side. Let everybody know. Tune in. Let's see what we're looking like on this side. Okay, audio is on point. With YouTube, let me see what we're looking like on Facebook, real quick. Are we rock and rolling on Facebook? <laughs> Goodness. Shalom, shalom, Facebook, am I here? Let's check the audio on Facebook. Okay. Got audio on Facebook. Facebook be lagging, man. Say something, you gotta wait a whole three minutes for it to play back. Okay. All right, y'all. Give me a second. Make these few. And Shalom, we live in effect right now. On both. All right. Please leave your 
Okay, you, you gotta start figuring out what the hell going on. You know, Friday nights, <laughs> what can you possibly be doing? <clears throat> All righty, so um, we're going to go ahead and get into some of this stuff, Friday Night Lights. We'll touch a couple things. Let me check. Um, Like I said before, if the camera starts to blur up, I'm going to actually turn the, get into some of this stuff. I'm gonna turn the visual part off. Yeah. And you'll just hear me audio. Okay. So it looks like we're starting to blur up already. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this piece off. All right, so what you'll see on the screen, you'll see on the screen from this point on nothing but the school logo. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. It was nice to see you. <laughs> Okay, guess I got jokes. What's going on, everybody? All right, so um, <laughs> um, you know, had some um, had some issues. There's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of things cracking right now in the country. You know, we got the we got the R. Kelly. <laughs> We got the R. Kelly situation. Um, R. Kelly, oh, I said that already. We got the R. Kelly situation in the white man and all his hypocrisy in every way you can think of and imagine. We got, uh, who else? Um, the government shutdown. We got that. Um, and then, you know, we got the issues, the things that I was going through. And, you know, I, I dipped off for a minute. I had to take some time to get myself back together. I was, you know, going through it, you know. Um, we all getting those little, you know, at some point in time, and it's true, never see the man to be any more than, you know, as if I'm some type of superhuman. You know what I'm saying? We deal with a lot, but we all have our times, you know, so. In those times, you have to measure a man by his deeds and by his actions. And um, it's going to be trying. But I, I was also seeing, while, while I'm sitting here, I'm babbling a little bit. But I was I was sitting here because um, I was seeing certain uh, people doing classes, and they were pretty much in, like, a uh, panic about the government thing. And I'm like, they want to know. So I'll, 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 I won't waste a lot of time on it because it's not like, what does it have to do with us? Mm -hmm. So the government thing, what happens is like around every, you know what I'm saying, like quarter of a quarter period of time, um, they'll have a thing come up where they want to, uh, the government, Congress, or the president want to uh, go in and talk about 
uh, the budget that there's a, cause you know, there's a budget that's set every year. And let's say someone doesn't like the budget or the way that the budget has been distributed. They'll go in and they'll say, well, we're not signing off on it until the budget is, or until the, it's a, it's a political tool that they use to get their, uh, their, uh, It's a political tool that they will use to get their enemies, their political enemies, uh, to change something about the government or the budget that they don't like. Get what I mean? So what happened is around the late 90s, uh, I want to say his name was Luke Greenridge. He decided not to approve the budget. And what's his name? Term? Uh, Lincoln and Lincoln's term. No, 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 no. What the hell am I talking about? And Clinton's term. He decided not to approve the budget because he was saying he did not want to waste the budget money. By wasting the budget money, he meant he didn't want them to help the poor. In, to him, wasting money was helping the poor, such as um, welfare, food stamps, Stuff like that. So he decided he was not going to sign off on the budget unless it was dealt with else the the budget they made an agree uh, else they made an agreement. Basically, he was not going to sign off on the budget in Clinton's term if they didn't come to an agreement on spending the budget elsewhere. Versus he because remember in his eyes, wasting the budget was helping out poor. When we say poor, we know he's not talking about his people. He's talking about helping our people. Right. So that was then determined as the first so-called government shutdown. So now <laughs> it comes back to us again. Now it comes back. Now we know that Donald Trump he wants something to change. So now he's using the same political tool, which is the not sign off on the budget, which means if the budget is the budget is not fun. If they're not funding the budget, then the government's not being funded. And when the government's not being funded, then some of the workers don't show up to work. Some of the cops stop coming coming to work. All right. You know, all these things that have a little trigger down effect. And so about 20, I think they say about 25% of the government isn't being paid now. Yeah, they say it's been worldwide. Right. They're saying about 25% of them are not being paid. So it will increase more. It will increase as the, as, as the time goes on. But it is a political bargaining tool. Now, what happens is Donald Trump made a promise to build a wall that would be high and great and big like the, uh, the Great Wall of China. Why? Because Donald Trump is stupid. <laughs> he's stupid so he of course makes a stupid promise and now he gets in there and the budget is being pushed out but he's like hold on what piece of this budget goes towards my wall that i want right the wall is for what 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 did he say the wall the purpose of the whole wall was keep mexicans out. he said to keep mexicans out and to keep drugs from coming in right, right. so <laughs> now everybody knows that goddamn wall ain't gonna stop a damn thing why? Because the same people who are going to build the wall is going to build the underground tunnels to still get in there. <laughs> so it's not about the wall. He knows that that wall ain't going to work. Everybody knows the wall ain't going to work. He don't care about that. The wall is a metaphor. Right. The wall is a metaphor. What is the word metaphor? To show that white supremacy. That's all that's about. You know what I'm saying so now when you get to that point, Donald Trump, but this is another thing. How you know that the wall ain't gonna work uh when it comes to drugs? We know it ain't gonna work when it comes to keeping Mexicans out, but how do we know that the wall the wall ain't gonna work against drugs? They bringing the damn drugs in. Bingo. Because the agents are the ones who's bringing the drugs in. There's drugs in the prisons. <laughs> 
<laughs> like you can still get high in prison. <laughs> so that lets you know as as good and as many security and everything again, no inmate really goes in and comes out. So how's all the drugs in the prisons? Right. They are bringing it in. And it's going to be the same exact thing. So like, yeah, give me a second. Somebody's calling. So, so like y'all forgive me. So, this the reason why that wall isn't going to work against drugs. It's the same reason it's not working. The same reason why drugs are in the prison right now, because the people that you have to set security or to build it are the same ones who build the tunnels for them to still get in under. So they'll build an underground tunnel, sneak in the country. And then they won't have to worry about the drugs because the people you set eye at gate are the ones who are bringing the dang drugs in. Right. The nip and tuck method, right. Yeah, you absolutely right. So when you take that into consideration, everything they're doing is nothing. This isn't the first government shutdown. So why do you have these so-called prophets out here who panicking, I don't get it. When when it comes to this whole thing that we're talking about here, what 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 uh how should you feel about it? How should you feel about a so-called government shutdown? You shouldn't care. Well, like, what the hell? Who cares? What is the difference? What is the difference? Just follow, serve the most high. What is the difference? I mean, what difference does it make? What the black people gonna be poor? Oh snap! Oh, oh snap! <laughs> what is the difference? Last year, the government was fully funded. Right. If the people who wasn't serving to them all last year, they were getting thrown in prisons and murdered in the streets. Right. When the government, whether the government is fully funded or not, what good is that going to do a sinner? If the government is not funded, what good? Is, what 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 difference does that make to the to the righteous, them that serve the Most High? Right. It makes no difference. You know I'm saying, if the government was fully funded, you'll just have more cops out there ready to stop, frisk, and kill you. Right. But I'm not being funded now. You got a couple of them sitting on the sidelines, like, well, I'm not frisking. I'm not doing anything. If you're not serving the most high, it's going to be deadly to you whether the government's funded or the government's not funded. Okay. Um, then the one brother say, uh, they, they, the uh, TSA, they said they're not checking food anymore. They're just going to let food come in, whether it's good or bad, because they're not, and all this stuff. Um, let's go to Matthews real quick. I, I did, I, I, I gave y'all a verbal. Me speaking it to you so I can make something clear to you. I didn't want to just bombard you with scriptures and then you be like, okay, dang. He gave me a lot of scriptures, but what's after, overall, what's the view on it? You get what I mean? So we'll do it like this. We go to Matthew chapter 6 now. Right, right. That's all. It, that's all it is. Is just a tactic to. Uh, it's that, but also the sweet other thing is because while you focused on that, like notice the government situation went down the same time that they was pushing this R. Kelly thing out. Right. Now the R. Kelly thing is nothing new. They didn't bring anything out that y'all didn't know already. Right. That's what I'm at. No matter. 
like this is a big deal. They're like it's brand new. He this like we've been new all of this. Right. Hey, I got a better question for you. Why they didn't do the documentary on Hugh Hefner? Where's the documentary on Elvis Presley? Yeah, I heard that was a sick mother love. Right. Where's the documentary on the image of the dude that they call Christ? Right. That's another documentary. <laughs> Where is the documentary on your people who founded this so-called country? Well, who so-called founded? You know the ones who came over here, raped, robbed, and murdered a whole damn nationality of people? Right. You sick bastards got the nerves to put R. Kelly and Bill Cosby all through the news and drag their names all through the mud. Are we taking up are we making excuses for them? No. What's sick is sick. Right. But what we are saying is it's so it is such a crazy thing that our people are quick to beat the hell out of our own people and then ignore their people. And then they are the ones publicizing it as if they got the last person on the face of the earth that should be condemning somebody for any type of crimes or evil or wicked or sick acts is the so-called white man. Right. How many 12-year-old slave girls? Younger than that, and boys. And boys. You rate the young. Where's the damn documentary on a Catholic church? Now that's Documentary. Where's the documentary on your pope? He giving babies head. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Boom. I'm just saying. All right. So let me let me slow down. I don't want to get. <laughs> I ain't. Been, hey, y'all know I got some grease cooking because I ain't been on in a couple of about a week and a half. Right. You know I'm saying. It's been, you know, I, I, like I told you, I was going through some things, man. Y'all got to forgive me. As a fact, I would like to, as a fact, let me, let me, let me, I'm, I'm going to move it too fast. Let me slow it down. Let me slow it down. <laughs> All right. So let's go back to the original point. So you got people that's uh, worried about the fact that the, go <laughs> the government is not going to, uh, the government is not being funded. They think it's some people, you know, the government might not never open. Oh, be quiet. You I almost called you something. Keep the commandments. Just keep the commandments. Just keep the commandments. They're not checking food no more. That means we're gonna be eating food that ain't no good and we might get real sick. Just keep the commandments. Let's go to Matthew chapter six and let's start around verse um if he dies, he dies. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say, you know. Start at, uh, matter of fact, let's go ahead and go to, um, let's start at 24. Matthew 6 and 24. We're going to start way up there. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. So, so read that again. Read it from the top. No man can serve two masters. <laughs> no man, that's the whole point right there. No man can serve two masters. You want to know why a lot of people are losing their damn mind about the government? Because guess who they were really serving? See, so. see, the government shut down the sinners, those who ain't keeping who don't know Christ. Oh, yeah, you need to be worried. You need to be worried. Big worry. But our master ain't shut down, theirs did. Right. So why are you panicking about it? What has the government actually done for you? <laughs> I did everything they never did for us. So I can tell you they're killing us. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. So, so you gotta, you gotta ask yourself, what has the government ever done for you? <laughs> All right, read on. Well, either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Right. Go ahead. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. You can't serve God and mammon. Come on. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Take no thought for your life. Come on. What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink. So why are you worried about who's going to bring the food in? They're not going to check the food. It's going to be bad food. 
you think that you've been eating good food all this time? Hell no, they purpose was to get your black ass up out of here. I'm trying to figure out, like, who possessed you to think that you were ever eating food that was thoroughly checked? Did you not see them pumping steroids into your chickens? Right, they said that. Do you not see them shooting up the cows? Then they got McDonald's with their mayonnaise. Right. Oh, yeah, tell them about the mayonnaise at McDonald's. You got to yeah. bring that out. Listen. McDonald's, 95% of the, the mayonnaise that they putting on your meat chicken or whatever they putting that mayonnaise on and got sperm in that mother elf. So people catching herpes from mayonnaise from McDonald's. Y'all thought it was a game, huh? Stop eating them herpes sperm infected and stuff at <laughs> McDonald's. That's why they put certain places like that in our neighborhood. Talking about checking some food. They trying to get rid of you. Right. Right. So the brother, he, he was um. Remember, you was you 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 went to look it up because you like this don't look right. Yeah. And then he looked it up, and then uh, what happened? Like, what was it like a two a day later? Yeah. They came out and said that they've been busted for having semen in they uh and they mayonnaise. Because I'm telling you, man, cause I started taking the tops off my big chicken. Right. It don't look like mayonnaise. Right. So. Whoever told you that you were actually eating food that was thoroughly checked? Watch this. Read, read, uh, read that again. Uh, the verse we start. Yeah. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink. What you shall eat or what you shall drink. Right. So the reason I say. Why do you why do you believe you was uh eating anything that was cleansed to begin with? Because the scriptures tell us. Give me Ezekiel 4 and uh 13 real, real quick and we're gonna come back. This is Ezekiel 4. Yeah, Ezekiel 4 and 13. Ezekiel chapter 4 and verse 13. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whether I will drive them. Mm. So in the land that we would be drove into or scattered in, guess what? We would eat our bread defiled. So what do you care that somebody is not telling you this meat is safe to eat? Right. You've been eating meat that was probably defiled anyways to begin with. Right. Keep the commandments. It's just that simple. Keep the commandments. Okay. If you're ready, we can pick back up where we was at. Unless you got something. Yeah, um, it just seemed like it went to something that was asked. The next verse. Oh, okay. Well, pick up. Let's let's finish 25 out. What you shall eat or what you shall drink. Nor yet for your own, for your body. What you shall put, what you shall put on. So, you shouldn't even be worried about clothing. A lot of people had to be ass naked back. Right. I mean, all our things are provided from our Father. Uh, the worries that some of these people have going on, it shows the lack of faith, yeah. and it also shows that you're worried because you may not be doing what you're supposed to be doing. Like who you really serve. Right. Oh, you know, maybe you put your trust in your strength in Egypt. <laughs> Read on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than remnant? Mm -hmm. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bones. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. And are ye not much better than they? Right. So the birds have no order they have they don't straw they don't born they don't gather but guess what the father from heaven still feeds them and are you not being the seed of abraham being the child of jacob being the chosen people are you not better than they read on which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature go ahead and why take ye thought for a remnant Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They they toil not, neither do they spin. 
And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Go ahead. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which the day is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye, o ye of little faith? And it goes back to the point right there. O ye of little faith. Oh, ye of little faith, you're so worried about the government. Oh, God. The government isn't funded. Oh, God, what are we going to do? How about keep the damn commandments? That's what we're going to do. Read on. Watch this. I just want to read. I just want to get to a certain point. Okay, we on. Mm -hmm. 32, right? All right. 31. Therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whether wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles see. For after all these things do the Gentiles see. Read. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Come on. But seek ye first the kingdom of righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's the whole point of why we're here. Seek ye the kingdom of God, and the Most High will deal with all that other stuff. The Most High know exactly what you need. Why are you so stressed about the government? Because your trust is in Egypt. You trust in the great whore. The government shut down ain't got nothing to do with you. They're not a terror to good works. All right? Um, and like I was saying earlier, what's what's going to happen? The government not funding? Oh, black people. What, like what? What haven't you already seen while the government was already funded? Right. You've always been poor. We've always been poor. That don't make a difference whether the government getting a check or not. Now, like I told you, the ones who's going to affect is those who don't know the most high, those who are not keeping the commandments. Those are the ones that better get worried. Those are the ones who better get worried. But in our case, they're going to say, okay, we're going to be poor. Okay, what did he goddamn do? Hell, I've been poor my whole life. <laughs> what, 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 what's going to change now? I've been poor my whole life. I'm gonna put, let's go like this. Give me, um, I'm going to go to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. Matter of fact, I really want to just get to the point. Give me uh, Ecclesiastes 4. And 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and 11. It says, again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? The reason I went here is because the whole point of me reading this to you, if again, if two lie down together, they have heat. If one lay down by himself, how can he be warm? Understand, it is, it is hard to be warm in the bed by yourself. So in other words, what I'm saying is, it's hard to be poor alone. But here in what nation, here, where we keep the commandments, we are a collective group of poor. <laughs> it's a lot easier to be poor when you're not poor by yourself. Why? Because guess what? <laughs> be as bad as your poor. My poor may lack in these things, but your poor lacks in that. And my poor, where I have good, where I'm sustainable at, you may struggle. So therefore, my, my sufficiency makes up for your lack. What I'm lacking at, you may be sufficient. Therefore, your sufficiency makes up for my lack. And by that, we all keep ourselves from going up under the water. Right. We stay afloat. It's easy to be poor together. It is hell to be poor alone. Hey. All right? So... Don't get it twisted. Don't don't let these people fool you, man. Don't ain't no need to be worried. <laughs> All right. So now 
Um, it was some things that I was going through. I was um, kind of, you know, got down for a little bit. Um, and you know, I'm I'm, I'm back. I'm back. But um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it like this. I want I'm trying to figure out where do I want to actually start at. Um, because uh, I. I was going through some things, right? Y'all, I'm quite sure those amongst me already know what the situation is. Um, so, when we, hold on. Okay, let me let me get with that real quick. Exodus 34, 16. Could you read that for me? Exodus 34 and 6, what is it, 19? Yeah, 19. Mm -hmm. 19? Mm -hmm. Exodus chapter 34 and 19. All that openeth the matrix is mine. And every firstling among thy cattle or sheep that is male. Okay, so now what this is going into. Okay, what's the uh, matrix here is talking about vagina. That's the best way I can tell you. It's talking about the vagina. All right. Go back to Exodus 13 and 2. Exodus chapter 13 and verse 2. Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, wheresoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast. It is mine. Right. So now, go back to Exodus 34 and 19. Exodus chapter 34 and verse 19. All that openeth the matrix is mine. And every firstling among thy cattle, whether ox or sheep, that is male. Right, so what's going on here? The matrix is talking about the vagina. Okay, all that opening the vagina is going into the firstborns of everything. Everything that the firstborn is it is the most highs. It belongs to the most high. Like your ver your firstborn child is the most high. It belongs to the most high. All the other children follow suit. Okay, it's not saying that the most high doesn't love the rest of the children, but he's saying the very firstborn. Of all, all the children, all your very firstborn, they belong to the Most High. That's why, even when in uh, Egypt, the Most High he killed what? All the firstborn. All the firstborn of even of the males and of the uh, the 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 beast of the fields right. and stuff. So, is <clears throat> as that's that's basically simple. It, that's basically what it's going into. All the firstborn belong to the most high the others follow suit so all the elder all the eldest kids like the first they belong to the most high rather it be boy or girl if he, if your firstborn is a girl she can inherit she can't get the inheritance but then her husband when he marries her it will become his all right i know what i know okay i know <laughs> that's where you got to go back through numbers and stuff where you'll see that I don't want to when you go into numbers you'll see how the inheritance was able to go to the daughters right yeah so um, that's what that's going into alright um, okay so 
<clears throat> Let's go to Syrac. I ain't gonna hold y'all late tonight. Um, all those of One Nation, I expect you to be on time tomorrow for the Sabbath. On time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Lord have mercy. Let me say after uh I'm gonna, I'm gonna say after 1 30, you're officially late. At least for tomorrow. So I'm not gonna hold y'all late tonight because I um I ain't giving no cloaks. <laughs> All right. Um watch this. Let's get uh Cyrac 211 deal with a couple issues. Now, first off, I want to uh I want to apologize to to the body. Um you know, I got down. I got down, I got down. <laughs> I got down, man, and I'm kicking myself and, you know, having sympathy for yourself is one of the worst things you can have. Okay? Um Let's read this so we can I can I can babble a little bit. <laughs> so he just talked over that. All right, so, one. Mm -hmm. so I write chapter two and verse one. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Yeah, that time's that time shifting up early as heck, man. So and my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So the scriptures tell you. When you come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul for temptation. And, you know, temptation comes in all different types of ways. You know what I mean? Because you could go through some things and it may not be tempting you to go have sex. It may not be tempting you to smoke, but it may tempt you to say, I need to rob somebody. It may tempt you to start thinking, dang, I go back to my old ways. You when you when everything when all eyes is when everything seems like it's against you and you can't clearly see, you know, we all know the most high is work. He he got something that is always something on the other side of that door the most high got for you. But when you can't see it, that's what that faith is about. You can't see it. Like when everything around you seems like it's going bad and nothing, you don't you can't see it. It's it's what is it that's you know. I want to put you in my shoes for a minute, being one that I deal with everybody's issues and never actually deal with my own, right? Um, and by that, I don't mean like, oh, I'm doing this and doing that. No, I ain't talking like that. I'm saying that I have things that affect my daily life as well, that I will always be to be one to you know, push those things to the back burner to deal with other people's issues. And you'll have those times where eventually, if you put enough in that cup and you never empty it, it'll start to run over. And you have to uh, somehow uh, pour some of the stuff out of that cup for you to be able to take in more. That's the issue here, where I had a buildup of things and it finally came to the point where it made me crash out. And I fell out and I went to kicking and feeling bad for myself and I disappeared. I went in the spirit on the Sabbath. I stayed in my room pretty much the whole day. One of the worst things you could ever do, which is just feel bad for yourself. Feeling bad for yourself, self kicking yourself, that's one of the worst spirits you can have because it, it, it's a spirit that almost comes with a given excuse. You know what I mean? Because I'm upset, I need to smoke. Oh, I just feel so bad for myself. So I need to go get a whore. Having that is one of the worst spirits you can have, but understanding this, every last one of us is human. Every last one of us are people. We are human. We all have a certain point where 
What did Carrie Hilson say? Uh, her love have a limit. If every lump, every woman has a breaking point, something like that. Well, what she should have said was, "Everybody <laughs> has a certain breaking point. There's only so much you're going to continue to pile on." And some of us, we do a very good job. Some of us hold it in for years and years and years at a time, and then eventually, it just it runs over to where it just happens. Right. Like I told somebody yesterday at work, I said, "You know how hard it is to be going through so much." But really don't show it. You have to shake it off and come in to work and act like you still have it. Right. You got to be around other brothers and stuff. And imagine like sitting, you sit in this chair. And every last one of y'all, I know every last one of y'all done done it because I can see y'all spirits. And I can read your spirits. I can see when, okay, you just here and you, you going along with the motion, but you're holding something in that's mm -hmm. bothering you. I've seen it with every last one of y'all in here. I know. So imagine, okay, now I see your issues. Now, whatever I am feeling, I got to push that to the back burner and then try to find a way to deal with what's going on with you, with you. And then, okay, now when I get ready to think, I can go ahead and close my eyes at night. The phone goes to ring. It's issues going on over here or over there. Whatever the case may be, we all have a point where if you, all of us, and, and I don't know, that's why I try to get us to a point where Everybody can kind of somewhat vent their issues. I try to make it where I speak. Don't like, don't, don't do what you don't have to do. But when those situations come, understand this. Just I don't want to keep babbling. Sirat two and one again. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So when you come to serve the Lord, you must prepare your soul for temptation. Me, I've been in this fight long enough to know that. If everything's going good and it seems like it's going good, Satan is coming soon. Test is coming soon. Be ready to endure. Imagine, think, look, look. half of us wouldn't have made it through the first thing he went through. He lost all his kids in one day. Yeah. Most of us wouldn't have made it through just that alone. Then he lost all his business. All his He lost everything. Yeah. Then his health got hit. And somehow he still endured. Read on. Set thy heart aright and constantly and constantly endure. And make not make not haste in time of trouble. Right. And that's when I'm telling you about the thoughts that start running back through the head. I knew it was the old me trying to because no matter how long you're in this truth, believe that that old man still is in you. And you have to know at what point or uh, at what situation will that old man or that old woman knock at the door. Let me out. Let me out. You know the old man or the old man, woman coming because guess what? <laughs> that old woman in a second until you slap the sh out of him. Slap the sh out of her. No, uh-uh. Cuss that mother out. That's that old woman that lies within some of our sisters. And guess what? She know the perfect. She comes out every now and then. You have to catch her and be like, hold on, hold on. Let me get, get your ass back in here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Same thing with us men. That old man still lies within you. And you you might not even realize it because you've been in the walk for a little minute. But guess what? And when you least suspect it, uh, that old man be ready to pop off. He ready to kick the door in. He ready to tell you, go get that gun and go rob the pizza man or whatever the case may be. That old man is there. <laughs> he is there. But the scriptures tell you, in those times when you're going through those things, depart, uh, so like it, it says, get your mind right and constantly endure and make not uh, haste in the time of trouble, meaning don't be so quick to depart from the faith. Don't depart from the most. Don't let those old ways, don't let that old man or that old woman take over. Because I'm gonna tell you, man, I was in a I was in a bad place, man. I was in a bad place. You know what I'm saying, um, I think those who was, I think those who even had, the, you know, they gave me my my space, to let me go through my sorrows. I want to apologize because I know I was snappy. I was real snappy through this time. You know what I'm saying, um, and then. Also, I appreciate those who, you know, they call me daily. What's up? You all right? What's up? And I'm saying I appreciate all of that because 
those are things that you need, man. That old man kicking at the door, and then you you up to here with everything that's going on, and you're stressed out, and you're worried. You don't know what's going, what's coming up next. Only thing we need to remember is that the Most High told me this was going to be here. Right. This was going to be here. So now, watch this. Go to uh, jump the fire for me. For gold is tried in the fire, an acceptable man in the furnace of ash. I'm sorry. In a, for gold is tried in fire. So gold for gold is tried in fire. Come on. An acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. Right. The Most High has to measure you up. The Most High has to measure you up. That's why I was telling you, y'all. That's <laughs> I see y'all laughing because y'all know I'm not lying. That old man and that old woman is there. That person is still there, and don't ever deceive yourself and make you think that it's not. That old man and that old woman is there, and in the times of trouble, that's when they really want to come out. When people, when people uh, say you, <laughs> let me like this. Every last one of us being Israel can identify this. You go to job. You go to your job. You already stressed out. You got other things going on. And guess what? It seemed like they. It seemed like Satan at the job, and he know right. you going through whatever, cause he come and tempt you. And now that old man says, "The hell with this job. Let me whoop your." Oh yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm. Saying. Now, I know I've been stressed out this week too, but I always try to keep a strong mentality and play it off and stay at. <clears throat> but man, I almost, I almost did that this week. I almost told my manager, man, I will whip your ass up in here, man. The hell you got going on? Even the old man, that old man, that old woman be sitting up in you. <laughs> y'all, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sitting up in the house, y'all looking at each other. Y'all just want to fight. You don't even know what you really want to fight about. But the old, that old man, that old woman, and then it's not just that. That old man, that old woman is triggered off of the things that, that plague us through our captivity on a daily basis. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I understand, man. And that's what my situation is. But let's read five again so I, I can catch my thought again. Lord is tried in the fire, an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. Right. So gold got to be tried in the fire to see if it's pure. You measuring that gold in that fire to see if it's pure. The most high is measuring you through the furnace of adversity to see are you pure? Are you ready? Have you fully bought in? Where does your faith lie? Getting down in messed up times, it's understandable. But remember, I, what I had to remember myself, which is why when St. John came in the room to talk to me, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie to you, I was mad. I, didn't, I was already mad. I was going through some things. I had a million things going in my head. I didn't want to hear that. <laughs> I did not want to hear it when he came in the room. I tried everything to make him leave the door too, because he's like, he knocked on the door. I turned, I act like I couldn't hear it. And then he said, I need to talk to you. I said, I ain't got much to say. He said, well, just hear what I got to say. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> well, so I open the door, he come in, he say what he say. He walked out, I was like, man, I did not want to hear it, but that's what he was and that's how the spirit worked man he, he said what he had to say and i said all right all right i gotta find a way to shake it off me i couldn't shake shake the emotions and stuff that i was feeling off but i knew from those words you know what i'm saying that i had to find some way to get it back together you know what i'm saying so when, when you're going through things understand you, you're gonna have some time and i and i, I kicked myself about it a little bit but i'm one that knows how to push Push to the side. Let's go. Let's move on. You're going to be tried in the furnace of adversity. What will you do in those times? Because I remember scripture say, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take upon thee cheerfully and be patient when thou change to a lower state. You know what I'm saying? So whatever the most I got set for me, I'm either, I'm, I'm well deserving of it because all his judgments are just. If it's bad things, I'll probably deserve 10 times, 10,000 times worse. Right. But, you know, I just want you to understand that I am, I am, I do apologize, you know, 
because it, it, it I let it really, really, I really, um, I guess I finally hit that certain meter that happens every once in a blue moon with me where it take me and it makes me feel down and I want to be alone and all that, you know, just that build up and it finally erupted. But measure me by my times. Measure me in the times of adversity and, and things like that. See what did I do? What did I do? Okay. Well, for one, he 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 broke. He stuck to himself. He didn't you know. He didn't go out and he didn't go out and go get him a blunt. He didn't go out and start saying, "Okay, well, let me go sleep with this woman, that woman." No, he didn't do that. He didn't break the commandments behind it. But he did wear his emotions on the sleeve, and we have to find a way to keep ourselves in the spirit when those things happen. That's where I have an issue with what happened with me. Okay. Um, <clears throat> remember this. Uh, let's go to Timothy's. Let me find what I'm looking for. Let's go to Timothy's. Second Timothy's chapter three, right? And start at verse 10. Second Timothy chapter three and verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience, persecution, affliction, which came unto me at Antioch, at Corinth, Iconium. at Iconium, at Lystraea, which persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. So all, because you know, we know Paul went through a million and one things, persecutions, afflictions, almost being killed more than any other, thrown in jail more than any other, striped up, I'm saying they strike my cane. Oh. He went through it, right? He said, but through all of those things, the Lord delivered him out of them. The Lord delivered him out of them. So with everything Paul went through, with everything Job went through, we we got the examples to see them being delivered out of them. Tobit situation. Yeah. We saw him get delivered out of it in giving his vision back. Right. Why then would I worry about what's going to happen with me next? Right. I must walk through the fire and understand that in that time, I got to keep the commandments and be patient. But the Lord, <laughs> the, the Most High God, tries acceptable man through the furnace of adversity. Give me that verse that I want now, verse 12. Verse 12, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. Hold on, read that again. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. And all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. We all going to suffer persecution. I'm going to go through some things. You gonna go through some things, the sisters. They gonna go through some things. It's not going to. It's not going to stop. Why? Because at some point in time, the most sides thought, okay, I'll let you rock out real good that, through that time. That was supposed to be the, that good time, building up your faith, building up your uh, your spirit, all this. I'm building you up through all this time. That's why you had a good little smooth little walk. Now, let me see what you're gonna do when I shake the ground up under you. Now, you know what happened. Satan ran up there and said, you know what? Everything good. Yeah, he doing the worst. Yeah, he teaching. He doing all that. But I guarantee you, if we do this, he, he'll curse you. Hmm. So now you wonder why things seem like it's going good. Then out of nowhere, it seemed like a bunch of chaos start to break out. You, heard about, you see things start happening. 
the jobs acting like they trying to fire you. Your husband, your wife acting, acting like they like <laughs> going going damn crazy. Children acting a mess. Uh, examples. Don't y'all want to? Don't take me. I'm just saying. Like, notice you'll be going every single. It seems like everything's starting to go good. Then all of a sudden, a bunch of BS start to happen. You want to know what's going on? Satan has said, "Yeah, the, the most I said, my my son and my daughter's doing well." And Satan said, "Oh, that's only because they're doing good. I bet you if this happened, they'll curse you." How you gonna curse the Most High? Leave His commandments. You got some idiots that's really out there talking evil of the Most High. Somebody told me prayer don't change nothing. That's BS. Fighting constantly endure, man. Fighting constantly endure. There's nothing strange that ain't, that's happening to us. Think of it not strange of the fiery trials that's to try you. No, because I've I've put you, I've showed you, you've seen, you've tasted this good word. You've seen the, ble the blessings and the miracles that I put before you. You know what it is. So guess what? The scriptures tell you that what a friend could not be known in prosperity. Right. Meaning when everything is good. You don't know who your actual friends are. Right. You got to start going through some ish to find out who your friends are. Right. Because in that time of adversity, an enemy cannot hide themselves. Right. So same thing with the Most High. Yeah, you walk in, yeah, you, yeah, you, Lord, have mercy. He's strong in the faith. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, he's strong in the faith now because everything's good. Let's wait to see what happens when um this falls on. Let's see what happens when this situation comes up. Let's see what happens when that situation comes up. Are they still going to be faithful then? Right. Are they still going to be <laughs> mighty children of the Most High? Some of you better realize and ask yourselves. You better realize it and realize it fast that you must be tried. You must be proven. Prove all things. Trust not every spirit, whether the spirit, but try the spirit, whether it be of God or not. All right. Um, I could go on this all night. I got a lot of scriptures I want to touch, but I'm not going to do it. I don't want to touch them tonight. Well, I do want to touch them, but I'm not going to. All right. So I'll see y'all, Lord's will, um, at the Sabbath tomorrow. Um. I pray that this was a you know a little something something for y'all to kind of get where I'm going. Matter of fact, let's close. Let's give me that one scripture though, Corinthians. Um, known to man, dance like you. First Corinthians ten. Yeah. Twenty three. Ten and thirteen, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. There have no temptation taken you, but such as such as is coming to men. Every temptation that is taking you, everything you're going through, uh, none of it is this, oh my God, nobody else has ever been through it. It's a common thing. Everybody has been through it. Somebody's going through, probably going through it. Why are you going through it? And guess what? Somebody's probably going through something way worse than what you're going through. Go ahead. But God is faithful. But who? But God is faithful. The Most High is faithful. Come on. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Ye are able. Go ahead. But will with the temptation also make a way that ye may be. Right. That ye may be able to bear it. Understand this. Whatever you're going through, there's a reason why you're going through it. All of us don't go through the same struggles. All of us ain't got the same you know, thing. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? If you going through it, the most I know he's built you specifically to be able to go through it. You know, so there's nothing that's on you that's more than you can actually bear. We don't read about many people going through the stuff Job went through. Everybody wasn't built to take that load. Most I knew that Job was built for that. All of us can't. All of us are not built for issues in life, man. 
But if you going through it, you were built for it. So in those times, you have to find a way to endure. Stay patient. Keep the faith. Keep God's commandments. What situation will it be that you will let the Most High be able to look down and say, that was what drew you away from me? Give me that Romans real quick. Romans um, 835. Romans chapter 8 and verse 35. Romans chapter 8 and verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? So the scripture says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Now, what is the love of Christ? Love the, commandments. the commandments. But in that greater love, that like, what will you let separate you from Christ? Read it again. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Come on. Shall tribulation? Will it be tribulations? Will it be the things you're going through? Will it be the situations that's arriving in life? What will it be that you will be able to? What will it be that when that day come, the Most High is going to look at you and say, you left me in your time of trouble. You separated from me when this happened. You were strong and mighty on the corner. You read in a million classes. You fringed a million dresses. You did whatever the case may be. But when this particular thing happened, you chose that situation over me. Go ahead. Our distress. Come on. Our persecution. Will it be persecution? Come on. Our famine. Come on. Our nakedness. Our per peril. Our sword. So out of all these things that could happen, what will it be? Which one will it be for you that you will let that thing pull you from the most high? Separate you from Christ. What will it be? Because it should be nothing that will separate us from Christ. It should be nothing that we will allow to separate us. When it's already written that you're going to have to go through adversities, you're going to have to be, you're going to have to be measured up. It's already said. Right. It's already said people are going to hate you. People are going to talk about you. People are going to want to kill you. It's already said. Jobs are going to fire you. Uh, evictions are going to come. It's already said. Whatever the case may be, like whatever, like we were in the streets. We, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to tell you something that I realized. And I know as a person, we all want that sense of security. No one wants to be homeless. No one, you know, we all want that sense of security. But when we was in the streets, we're like, man, it's whatever. It's whatever. Now, now you want the truth. It, it ain't whatever. I can't be that. So you were more about it in the streets than you were in this truth. Because now <laughs> I'm with you as long as it ain't this. Come on, man. Tighten up. <laughs> Shake it off, baby boy. We got to get it together. All right? Watch this. Read 36. <laughs> as it is written, for they... As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Right. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. For, for, for Christ's sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. 37. Nay, in all these things ye are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Through everything that you can go through, everything you can think of, guess what? You are in a conqueror. Through him that loved us, which is the, the nobody chose us. I mean, Salaki, we didn't choose the Most High. The Most High chose us. So guess what? We got to understand that with everything that we can go through, everything that we will go through, it would behoove you to return that love. Because what love, what great, what price could you actually give a man that died for you? Like, 
at what point can you say, okay, I've done enough to pay you back for your life now? <laughs> That's the big, you just, the only thing, you, the only thing you do is give up your own life. So, man, I pray, I pray that y'all understand, man, I, I apologize. I, I mostly uh, repent and pray and apologize to the most high. Um, let's pick it up and get the rocking one nation. I, I got to talk to y'all about some stuff. I'm not going to talk about that live. We're going to um, get into it. You know what I'm saying? So with that, <laughs> this Friday Night Lights, I want to do a lot more, but I want everybody here on time. So I'm going to close it out now. So Lord's will, we, we see y'all tomorrow. Um, with that, I say shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom. Yeah. Oh. I even know the teacher was on a damn Facebook. But that scripture also that we just read in 36 makes me understand that the Hispanics are not our people. Mm -hmm. We are killed all the day. You can turn on the news and see that blatantly. When, have, when you walk past a young down the street, he got another picture of one of his homeboys on his shirt every week. <laughs>